Now if in the last episode you watched until the end you would realize that in fact this is where I ended off the video but in fact in that same recording I actually killed a pillager and got bad omen and then I decided to start a raid. Yeah. I didn't show that in the video because I thought that would, this would deserve its own video. I slept and then I prepared for the raid. Well, not really. But I was there for the raid. I got a couple of stones to lock the villagers in their houses for their own safety. And then I went into it. Now if you watched my raids are terrifying episodes, then you would like realize this. that I absolutely fear raids and I still kind of do but not really. So I decided to try and take them up from a distance instead so that I would be safer and not risk losing my hardcore world like being in a half a health. So I continued to take them out one by one. The Ravager continues to sneak up on me but I healed melee to defeat it instead of my bow to save up on arrows but eventually I'd use my arrows when I really needed them because that was a better idea well at least that's what I thought I pull it up but that didn't work so I continued to fight it now. so I continued to use melee instead and then I eventually took it out I turned back and I realized I didn't actually take it out and then I continued to slay the pillagers one by one I then go up to the house and they got a piece of cobblestone to lock his door so that the villagers can get to him and he can't come out. And then I seal up his house as well and continue the raid to fight the door. And then whoa look that is no, 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 too many mobs, too many mobs. I decided to use my bow in this situation as there were a lot of mobs. There was a Vindicator and a Ravager, my most dangerous foes. I just like the sound. I ran and then I looked behind me and sniped them one by one. That was the safest and best way. And then I fought the evoker. I took him up pretty quickly and I was very happy for that but then two vindicators snuck up on me. I ran and then I decided to take them out one by one using melee. I was careful because my health was getting low. And then I take out the last remaining raider and wait as the next raid begins. As soon as the raid starts, I take out a vindicator and then I continue using the strategy of taking out the raiders one by one. And then I turn around, look behind me, and I realize there's an evoker running very quickly over there. I, just like I tried to shoot him with my bow, but he was running too quickly. I could not hit him from here. So I had to do it, and that's exactly what I did, I went melee. As I approached him, he summoned his vexes, but I, I didn't really study them, and I took out the evoker fairly easily, and then this vindicator came out of nowhere, I grabbed the totem, and then I finished off the job of taking out the evoker, the vindicator. And then another evoker, and I saw the Ravager behind me, but I still focused on taking out the Evoker. My health was very low, and I ran. And then I healed up by eating golden carrots. I looked behind me, and I saw that there were many mobs behind me. I took out the Vexes as best as I can, and then I focused on the Vindicator. And when I was done, I ended up fighting a Ravager and the Evoker. A very dangerous combination. I tried to take out the evoker first and then I went for the ravager. I run away from the raid and I eat golden carrots. There were two ravagers following me. I then use the best strategy. Of course, I turned around and sniped with the bow. I was set on fire by this vex. I tried to put myself out of fire, but I was already out of fire. I placed water thinking that would slow them down, but the water has failed me. I killed one of the Ravager and then I had the other one with the Vindicator on top of it to deal with now. 
I also got that one and then the Vindicator. I take out the Evoker and then as soon as I took him out I saw two Vindicators and I immediately ran to get out of any trouble I would be in. I looked behind me and then I took out one of the Vindicators. And then afterwards I fight these group of raiders, a witch and a vindicator. The witch splashes regeneration and I end up getting new regeneration as well. But the thing is, it still isn't that fair because there was multiple of them and they had the regeneration as well. I turned around and there was three of them. I ran and took out them out one by one. Then there was only one raider remaining, the witch. I found the last raider, it was a witch and I took her out and then I realized the raid bar was stuck and then I marked victory, I had won my first raid. I celebrated and then afterwards I did not waste a single second, I shot this chicken on accident but still I was very happy and I traded with the villagers as much as I can, especially when it came to farming. I went to trade but then out of nowhere this creeper came. I quickly shot it with my bow and it was gone. And then I continued to farm to trade with the villagers as intended. And then I came up to this farmer and traded with him. I gave him more wheat seeds than he probably had as a tip slash bonus for his hard work and, and for trading with me. And then I continued on to trade with other villagers. And then I come here to my fellow librarians to see what books they had to trade with me. This one had a breaking three. Wait, they give you books? I did not know they gave you books. That is very interesting. If I would have known, then I wouldn't actually have bought that bookshelf. But okay then, I did not know that. I learned something new, I guess. I took the emeralds, and I went outside. And then for one of my favorite things that I like to do, farming. I then farmed up some sugarcane. And then I look for the librarian that trades me in paper for emeralds and I trade with him for as many emeralds as I could have gotten. I waited and then he had loyalty 3. I was very proud of that trade. That was a very good trade. I would use it in the future. I come to thank these guys for all that they have done for the trading, they let me do with them. 
and then I give them a book to see if anyone will take it, but no one took it. So I took it back, and then I came out. I decided, why should these guys live in captivity? You know what? We're on free. It appears they were too accustomed, they did not want to go free. But then I did a long enchanting session where I tried to get best enchant for my helmet and sword. And then I go and kill a lot of mobs, check for some general XP, I decided not to use the XP farm, I just have some fun with it. So here's my mob killing. Once I was in the nether, I was prepared and I was ready to go explore the fortress. It was close enough to which I could bridge towards it, so that's exactly what I did. I was very careful and I listened for any gas that I may encounter that could possibly shoot fireballs to knock me off. But either way, I continued. While I was setting my bridge in the proper direction and I hopped onto the fortress, well I was about to, until this place shot at me. There were clearly a lot of them and they wanted war. So I took out that one and then I decided the safer thing to do would probably be to take them out and then try to bridge first, actually. So I ate and then I jumped down, onto the fortress. I immediately had one goal, blaze rods, so that's exactly what I went for, the blaze spawner, which was right inside, thankfully. 
I killed blazes one by one being careful so that when I was in fire to be careful of my surroundings. There was lava all around this fortress and I wanted to be careful, especially with the skeletons and blazes always being here. I just wanted enough for the end portal which I would need 7 just to be a reassuring I had 6 already so one more and I was out of there. I was thinking I could get a few more so that I can brew potions but I was still deciding. I decided that I would get some to make potions, so I killed some more blazes, and then I would head home afterwards. And then when I was done, I decided I had enough, and then I went to, to finish upgrading my sword to the best sword ever. So after I killed some mobs and got enough experience, I went and I applied my first book. But I still didn't have enough levels. I needed one more level. I applied the book Sharpness 5 and Looting 3. Those were my first two enchants to apply to the sword. And then I checked how much for my next enchant. So I put the sword on the book and 25 levels. This will take a good while. So let's go back to killing those mobs once again for XP. And while we're at it, we might as well use the diamond sword. And then when I reached level 25, I went to the anvil and I applied the second book, sweeping at 3 and unbreaking 3. And then I went back to test the sweeping edge and it worked really well. And then I checked the next enchant, which would be the last two, knockback 2 and mending, 36 levels. We had to go into another time lapse for some levels once again We spent our days on the coast of something beautiful We got pulled into the tide of something real Somehow I lost you on the way I assumed you left me behind after that long time lapse that you just saw, I was done at all 36 levels. I put my sword on the last book in there, but then I realized I wanted to rename this thing. So I saw how much it would cost, it cost me one more level. So I decided I'll get that level and then... And then after I got that level, I named it The Swinger with two E's just for the emphasis on the Z and then I named the original just as a tag because this is the first one and I'd say that's 37 levels well spent the perfect sword and it's a perfect one for me some people don't like knockback and sweeping edge and so on but I, it was perfect for me thank you so much for watching this video I really do hope you enjoyed and if you did enjoy then considering sharing this video with someone who you think might enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching straight until the end. Really do appreciate it. Peace.